Oh, shit. I didn't even notice there were two cameras going the whole time. I kept leaning over to this one. <laughs> What's good? It's your boy, Shy, a.k.a. Mr. Get Your Buzz Up with Get Your Buzz Up. I'm here with Reeves of the Rhyme Says. What's cracking, homie? Nothing. I got a... Burger King receipt <laughs> in what? my pocket for two dollars and for two dollars. What did you get at Burger King? I don't want to talk about it. I'm it. ashamed. <laughs> I'm ashamed that I ate at a truck stop Burger King earlier. Oh man, that's. I hope you're not eating like that in the whole. No, week. no, that's the first. That's the first time I've done that in a really long time. Yeah, the the, the first time I was ever on the road. Cause I do tour manager management stuff too. Everybody ate like crap, and I it was horrible. I can't do that. Can't. I, I learned a lesson really quick, so can't imagine Burger King is. Ugh. Yo, that's all they really have in Europe, like on all the like little truck stops and stuff. And their truck stops are way nicer than ours. But like some of them will have like you know you can get like a glass of wine and like meat and cheese and like a bunch of stuff like that. But then there's like everything's super nice and then they have like the nicest burger king you've ever seen in your life so, so you it's just like the only like food option that you have at the at the place which is weird you don't see many mcdonald's on the side of the road or no anything except and I, for burger and king. i already don't trust mcdonald's in the united states i can't imagine a mcdonald's at a truck stop oh my goodness that's not yeah no it's uh, gross. Uh, but yeah so um how's how's uh everything going with the tour thus far uh the tour's been good um we did kind of west coast canada and then central canada and dipped down into minneapolis we did two nights in minneapolis back-to-back -back nights the first half which was kind of a big career move for me yeah. so that was really exciting um both nights were really really good and super fun and we got to play with k flay who's playing tonight we got to play with her last night too so it's back-to-back -back nights with k flay from our back-to-back -back nights at first half so it's nice. This is only our third show and the U.S. portion of this tour. So, um, what, what's been the best part thus far on this tour? Because you tour a lot. You're, you're on the yeah. road a lot. So so far, what's what's been the best part? Um, well, we got a little bit of a new dynamic going on on the stage. We have a new guitar player, um, so things are um, more dynamic. Like uh, the guitar lines are are more um, complex. There's some more stuff going on and. Um, it's still the same setup. It's just different people and um, playing some new songs this go around than we have in the past that I haven't really been comfortable doing before. So, um, you know, pushing the comfort zone a bit. Um, I feel that. And it's, uh, it's been going good. It's been going really good. I'm, and I don't get out to places like this very often, you yeah. know, like yeah. this is my second time headlining in Madison ever. So, you know, it's cool to be able to come here and, and uh, play the high noon and I've played here a bunch but yeah. like when I was younger and stuff and doing a lot of support gigs so it's cool to bring it back and finally put my feet on the stage yeah. and see how it goes and Madison loves the rhyme series they just yeah they, Wisconsin yeah man, they yeah, Wisconsin you know what you're right you're yeah. right Wisconsin period. Milwaukee goes buck yeah it's it's crazy when I first moved to Wisconsin it's one thing I learned is everything is rhyme series first so that's yeah that was that was kind of dope um so the the title Winter and the Wolves. Where'd you get, where'd you get that title from? Well, you know I'd been watching a lot of Game of Thrones, so I was hoping that was gonna be the answer. And it was like I was using that to write with. Like I wasn't really using it as an album title at first. I was just you know it was in shreds, and I was just kind of using that imagery in other songs. Um, and then it, you know, I was gonna originally call the record uh, "Learning What Can Never Be Taught." Okay. But it sounded too much like "Together Apart." Mm -hmm. It's like kind of like conceptually the yeah. same, you know. And so, um, my manager and you can't see him, but he's over there smiling <laughs> like a dick. Um, <laughs> they, they, they were like, "Well, you know, blah blah blah,", blah and we came to "Winter and the Wolves" and. So we started working on that concept more and it kind of just came, it stemmed out of shreds and, and then, you know, the, the imagery that comes with, with that. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's the first thing I thought of. And I was really hoping your answer would be. I was fully saturated with games, Game of Thrones Man, at the time. The show's awesome. It's very awesome. They even did a mixtape. 
a hip hop mixtape. I couldn't believe really. It. Yes, and they had some pretty big acts on there. I was I was shocked. Did you know about that? Game of Thrones mixtape. They they did a full mixtape. It was crazy. Like HBO did. Yeah, HBO did. Yeah, I gotta check that out. Yeah, I was. And it's good. It's not like. Uh, I mean, it has its, its moments. Yeah, it has its okay. like any mixtape, but that the the fact that they did it and they brought in they brought in um rappers that actually loved the show and watched they the didn't show. fucking bring me in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bitch ass hbo your management's gonna have to work on that now yeah hey you got to step the game up mom <laughs> <laughs> my mom's my manager she's great too <laughs> so um on this project um I, i've seen you talk about in the past how you you're working with a, a different producer and not just you know um not just you know taking in beats and and rhyming over beats you were actually hands-on with the producer and and putting together the tracks and and um yeah. formulating the records and making sure everything is done you know the way you wanted it done how has that changed you as an artist and as is this something you're going to be continuing to do as you go forward in your career? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy that process a lot, and it makes me feel more connected with the music. And when I can have um, involvement on that side of everything, then it doesn't just stop there. I mean, it carries over to the stage. It carries over to videos. It carries over to art. It carries over to everything. So when I'm able to be hands-on with the music, then I'm able to be hands-on with everything. Um, or else I would feel like I just rapped on it and, you know, I, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to make music. Yeah. So I want to, you know, I want to, I want to live in that side of, of this business a lot more than I feel like your traditional rapper yeah. would, I yeah. guess. Um, my passions lie kind of all over the place. And mm -hmm. even if I stopped rapping after this interview, you know, like I could still, go work in a studio, I could be, you yeah. know, I could help produce records for people, I could be a tour manager, I could do all yeah. sorts of stuff, but, uh, um, you know, I just like to be hands-on. So That's what's up. So uh, is that ever going to happen, is is when you when you might hang, hang up the pen and a pad and do more producing work um, with other artists? You know, I'd like to find a, a a balance because I do love rap. I like, I love rapping. I love yeah. writing music. I love doing vocals and stuff like that. Um, but I would like to get involved in other musical adventures. Okay. Um, just so that I don't feel like I'm constantly focusing on the grieves thing and, and that could just, you know, maybe inspire the grieves thing in a new direction that I could probably benefit from, yeah. you know? Yeah. And nothing hurts when you're out there meeting different people yeah. and learning different styles of music and just kind of, you know, I don't want to hold myself back creatively. Yeah, so no, I feel you. Whatever I could do, I'd be, probably be into, you know? If, uh, well, let's just let's just roll with that one right there. Um, Is there any artist that you would want to produce for or – and and is there a producer that you really want to work with hands on? Well, I would love to work with uh, Questlove hands on, mm. um, just because he's phenomenal. And I know that's a very like rapper thing to say, but um, I think he's a musical genius. Yeah. So I just I would love to be around that because I feel personally I could learn so much from yeah. being around somebody like that. And um, I would also fanboy out super hard on him. <laughs> I'd ask him so many questions about D'Angelo yeah. and like his shit would just get weird. He probably would hate me. But uh um and as far as like working with other artists, like I would personally like to do some more aggressive stuff. Like I'd like to do like uh like if I was gonna do a hip hop record, I'd like to work with like a really aggressive hip hop artist like that. DMX. Yeah, DMX is you you get off the crack and you and I can talk. You just sober up, buddy, and we'll uh, I'll, th I'll throw you some slappers. Make some records. That's yeah. what's up. I mean, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd like traditionally for me, I would like to go like towards like a more kind of East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more aggressive hip hop tone would be really fun for me because That's I got I make a lot of those beats. I just don't do anything with them. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um. So you you basically learned about the rhyme says you know discovering a city in the skate park yeah became a fan of the label the fan of the artist 
and now you're you know you're part of the rhyme sayers you're three albums deep with the rhyme sayers do you ever look back and just say wow what like do you ever have a wow moment and then you know, all the time on everything all the time um I mean, I have a wow moment when I go home, which is like Fort Collins. I have that a lot because I don't see a lot of those people that much. Yeah. And so they have like a lot of questions for me mm -hmm. that I don't ever think about most of the time. And then when I start answering them, I'm like, whoa, yeah. shit, this is. Um, and I have it in Minneapolis a lot, too. You know, it's a legendary city for everything that I grew up listening to. Yeah. And, and, you know, being in there and being able to do back to back nights at First Ave, which is like a super famous venue is like. I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, yeah. And it's because of the rhyme sayers thing. And it's, it's, it's insane. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people, you know, when they're young, they have ambitions and they say they're going to do certain things, you know, and I never said I was going to do that, but I wouldn't have been pissed if you told me I could yeah. do it. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's just crazy to end up where I'm at. It's uh, okay. it's definitely a blessing for sure. Right. That's what's up. So, um, you, not when you started out, but at some point before the rhyme says you started working with Mac Lethal and yeah. um, with Black Clover. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from Mac? And I mean, do you still have communication with them now? And No, I don't I don't talk with Mac anymore. Him and I had a pretty bad falling out. He didn't like that. I left the label. So he got pretty malicious and did some pretty terrible things. And and so I put that part of my life behind me. Um, but I learned that people like him exist. And I okay. think that that's a huge thing. Um, because when I first started this, like, I was really green. Like, when I first started fucking with the Black Clover dudes, I was really green. And I just was like, I thought everything was, like, good. You know, like, yeah. every everything's fine. And I didn't realize that, like, you know, you hear horror stories about people getting taken advantage of and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, you know, it's not going to happen to me because I'm good people. So, yeah. you know, you give what you get kind of situations. And I know that that is totally not true in okay. that in my life. And, um, you know, I've experienced it elsewhere in this business, too. And it's a uh, um, it it's a those kind of things make me so grateful of my current position, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, I feel like everyone should kind of go through that okay like it i think it's helpful to understand it because Learning experience totally yeah. totally totally um because that was a seasoning time for me too like i was just grinding like my ass off i wasn't getting paid for anything over there like i was touring eight months out of the year like we we're using my van like I, it was i was grinding and i was doing it because i loved to do it yeah and i didn't even think about anything else and um, you know, I paid tolls for that in my personal life and in like business. Yeah. And I learned so much from that. Yeah. I learned how to delegate those things, you know, how mm -hmm. to balance that from that experience in my yeah. life. So, you know, I don't, I try not to look back at it too negatively. Okay. No, right? I feel you. I feel you. So, uh, what, what genres of music besides hip hop inspire you, inspired you when you were growing up and inspire you now? You know, I got I got into the West Coast gangster rap, like pimp rap when I was really young uh, because I thought it was funny. Yeah. And I used to smoke a bunch of weed and like sit around and listen to pimp rap. And, by uh, the tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> by the yeah. tree. Chilling by, by the tree, smoking <laughs> weed. And I, you know, I it just I never really heard anything like that. And we didn't have pimps in our town. We didn't yeah. know what any of that shit was. And all of our prostitutes were to just those were meth heads yeah. first, <laughs> then prostitutes. Okay. Um, so you know that was just it was funny and crazy and and then you know we discovered Wu Tang and yeah. Mob Deep and yeah. stuff like that and I loved that stuff so much because it was this new aggressive tone over this like melodic. Uh, you know, I was hearing my dad's records yeah. in the background, you know, and the, the RZA samples. You know, I was hearing like classical piano loops mm -hmm. with I'm going to cut your face off over it. Like yeah. I it was a it was something I'd never heard before. And it was it was captivating in so many ways because I was super into punk rock at the time. And okay. so I liked the more aggressive music because yeah. I was yeah. an angsty little fucker. And uh, <laughs> so that was a really good introduction for me and you know um you know uh once i discovered rhyme Sayers, it was kind of over like not over i mean i still listen to all that stuff yeah. but like it was 
it helped me find a way you yeah. know it helped me find a place um because i'm i'm not a pimp and i'm not yeah. a i'm not a prodigy from yeah. mob deep you know i so it was able for me to find a voice and um by learning both sides the um production styles were mm -hmm. very different especially in the late yeah. 90s early 2000s yeah. um the it was more g-funky on the west mm -hmm. coast and more gully on the yeah. east coast um, more sample driven east coast yeah. more synthesizer on the west coast and i was able to take both of those and just kind of rump them together and uh you know that i was able to do my kind of sing rappy stuff over yeah. it and um and be honest with myself and the songs that i write so that's what's up it, it was uh all of that stuff definitely took a play into me creating hip-hop music okay so um what's what's next for Greaves? i mean as far as projects um Greaves is gonna take a goddamn vacation that's okay. what he's gonna do <laughs> um i don't know i i you know i i made that track with sunreal and fierce um that was really fun for me um the just the production side of it and um i'd like to do more production stuff i'd like to work with other artists if my manager was sitting next to me he would be nudging me telling me that I will be working on a new record soon because I will we got our studio back up and running I just don't have a direction yet I don't really know what to say about it at okay. this point um, I'd, I'd like to find a, a producer that it, him and I could share a vision you know um, and I we've talked about a couple things but really at this point it's still kind of up in the air. open air okay. yeah yeah all right I mean, that's it, homie. I appreciate you taking time and, and talking. And so, um, of course, yeah, right. man. Yeah. yeah. This is Mr. Get Your Buzz Up and we out. I'm 36 years old, and this is the third time in my life that we've invaded Iraq. And clearly it's not working. Clearly it's a bad idea. You know, um, if we're talking about the concept of like spectacles and like the way that war is being waged, ISIS is so good with their propaganda.